Welcome to FFKA Olympics in Los Angeles, and the current unbeaten professional in the welterweight division will be taking on Troy Wortham on January 25th. Wortham, of course, the ESPN welterweight champ, and will be meeting Mark Breland in Lancaster, PA on that date. A telecast will be coming to you over ABC's Wide World of Sports. We'll have a chance to talk up close and personal with Mark Breland and get an insightful look at this personable young man from the Bed-Stuyvesant section of Brooklyn, New York. All that and more coming up next here on our PCTV sports special, Knockout. I'm Denny Petro, and sitting next to me is the Gold Glove champion, five times for that matter, Mark, and uh, that had to be quite an experience, winning that championship, uh, you know, four or five consecutive years. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, it was a thing where uh, everyone would tie the record at four, but I wanted to break it and um, go to five. Big audition, uh, not going to go. Olympic gold medalist. He has had a feature role in the movie Lords of Discipline. He is also featured in a TV music video by the Pointer Sisters. Currently, Mark is a professional welterweight boxer with a record of eight wins and no losses. His next match will be held on January 25th against Troy Wortham, current ESPN welterweight champion. This contest will be televised live on ABC's Wide World of Sports. At this time, I'd like to take this opportunity to present to you Mark Breland.
First of all, I'd like to say hello to everyone. Um, oh. Uh, <laughs> it's getting rough. This is tough enough fighting, to tell you the truth. Um, well, it's been, well, it's been about four, two good weeks right now. I've been training hard for this, for this fight that's coming up um, against Troy Wortham. And, um, I've been uh, working pretty hard. I really didn't have time to do anything, but when I found out, well, I found this out about uh, maybe a week ago that uh, Marlon Palmer had did something that I did something for me that I didn't know anything about. So um, they told me, well, when you be training, you're gonna have to go down there. And usually, I don't take out too much time for training. But uh, when I found out that um, Marlon Palmer was doing it, doing it for me, I said, well, no problem. Um, I think it's nice for someone to do something for anyone, really. Uh, even though I know you all know that uh, me and Marlon Palmer fought, uh, my, me and my second, me, I'm flying right now. He fought me in my uh, second pro fight, and uh, he gave me one of my—he gave me my toughest fight right then. And um, you know, for a guy to give me my toughest fight and go and do something for me made me feel good. So I said, "Well, I really have to uh, go down and uh, see what's going on, see what he's got." Because um, I've been really training hard, getting up at 6:30 in the morning, doing a lot of running, doing a lot of boxing in the afternoon, getting hit upside my head hitting someone else upside the head and um, it's been uh, pretty tough lately but you know like um, I'm lost right now to tell you the truth <laughs> but I'm gonna go off by saying this here if anyone want to ask any questions any kind of questions I don't care what type of questions if it's about school I'll ask them but uh <laughs> I might as well become a comedian right now but um, if anybody want to ask any questions I would be glad to answer any questions anyone like to ask I started boxing when I was about nine years old, and uh, I've been boxing hard ever since. I know y'all could do better than this because the ninth grade is was like that. Your Olympic experience? Could you tell us about your Olympic experience and what that meant to you and on the opponent? Well, in the Olympics, my Olympic experience was a big one because uh, it was something I've always watched on TV. It was something I've always wanted to do, wanted to win. You know, I looked and I saw Sugar Ray Leonard win the Olympics and I said, wow, you know, that's, you know, it seems like it's something, you know, like a great feeling. And um, when I won the Olympics, it was a great feeling because it was something a lot of people would doubt you to do, a lot of people will push you to do, and uh, I really pushed myself to do it, and it was something that no one can take away from me. Uh, they can take away a uh, championship belt by losing, but the Olympic gold medal, no one can ever take that away from you. Then you can always say to yourself and to anyone else that you, you've done something for yourself and you've done something for the United States. Yeah. <laughs> no, I have friends. No, no go. Excuse me? Do I have a boyfriend? No, I don't go that way. Where are you from? <laughs> yeah. You from Boston? 
Oh, well, I think Mike Tyson is a very tough fighter. Um, he's very rugged. He grew up in a rough neighborhood, uh, not too far from where, I'm, where I grew up at. And um, I think his only problem would be that he's just a very short heavyweight. Most heavyweights are six foot and tall. Well, I train, how long do I train for a fight? Um, I would train from four to three weeks. Uh, the first three weeks I would train very hard. The last week I would uh, cut down on the training so I can uh, have something left for the fight. Well, I don't have any weight to lose, really. <laughs> but um, I would probably lose maybe four to five pounds a day, but I would eat it right back on. What advice would you give a young person if they were well, if, you know, I would give the advice to, fight, to someone who is interested in boxing. It takes a lot of determination to uh, become a boxer, a lot of hard work and a lot of dedication. You would really have to dedicate yourself to become a boxer. You wouldn't have to like boxing, you're going to have to love it. Because no one likes to get hit upside the head. A rematch? I wouldn't mind a rematch with him. <laughs> well, I can say this. It'll be another tough fight. Excuse me? Well, I felt great to win the Olympic gold medal because um, it was something I, I did out on my own. I went out and did. But I like to say on a serious tip, um, you know, um, in order to really get anywhere and to make it in this world the way it is today and society is today, education is, you know, one of the big tips you really have to um, overcome. You would have to really succeed in it because um, any way you go, any, kind, any type of job you go for, not unless you're a drug dealer, you don't really have to have too much, you really don't have to know how to read. But um, any other, I mean, you know, a job, you would really have to have an uh, um, educational background because uh, that's the first thing they're going to look for. And if you don't have that, you're not going to get the money you're looking for. And I like to say, uh, good night, good to have a nice day. <laughs> and thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. Man. Mark is on a very tight schedule. He is training this morning and he is due back in Lancaster. We have one or two more things to do. So Mrs. Yashinsky and Marlon will please come up here. Um, we have as many, I'll speak as they come up. As you know, Marlon Palmer, Pottstown, did have the opportunity to fight Mark Reeland, and I spoke to Mark in our office today and he's indicated to me that Marlon was one of his toughest opponents. And this has inspired Marlon Palmer to do a special painting on this and we're going to reveal it at this time so if you'll step over there please. When you are ready Mr. Lloyd then we will go and Mark and for 
this momentous occasion, Marlon has a small token of appreciation to present to Mark Breland. Well, what it says is the agony of defeat, the fight of the year, Mark Breland, the Olympic gold medal champion versus Marlon Magic Land Palmer, January 5th, 1985, from Palmer's Art Studio, Pottstown School District, the Magic Be Back. Uh, I think this is uh, great. You know, um, you know, I'm very honored to, you know, to accept this award from Marlon Palmer, and uh, hopefully, in the years or later on in my career, I get a chance to fight you again. And uh, make a lot of money together. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, faculty and students, it's a true honor to meet a true gentleman as well as to fight the most heralded fighter in boxing history today, the, the 1984 gold medalist Mark Breeling. Despite the facts of my boxing performance, irrelevant to my conditions, in my viewpoint, Mark Breeland is the most correctional fighter since the retirement of the classy Sugar Ray Leonard. I painted this massive mural in dedication of Mr. Breeland's accomplishments in defeating Marlon Magic Man Palmer. The title of this magnum opus, The Agony of Defeat. The fight one year ago, January 5th, 1985. Dear audience, whatever your goals may be, reach beyond your agonies and your defeats, even beyond the most losing proposition. Boxing fans, media experts, says, if Marlon Magic Man Palmer fights as well as he uses his paintbrush, as well as brilliant fights, he'd truly be great one day. I hope we can get together and do it once again. However, Mark Breeland, the Magic Be Back, I truly wish the Olympic champion great success in his many pro bouts, even against the ESPN welterweight champion, schoolboy Troy Wortham. I honestly would like to thank ABC Wild World of Sports, Main Events Boxing, the Fight Factory, FFKA, the Postown School District, and special thanks to Dr. Ray Fight. Mr. Anthony M. Zampel and the Postdown Senior High School for making this all possible. Thank you. Here is Spoken Boxer and Portrait Painter. Thank you. He is a well-known local fighter, but a gentleman who aspires to be a, a great portrait painter, and he's off to a fine start in both categories. 
We'd like to thank everybody for joining us here on this PCTV Sports Special Knockout. Of course, our special thanks to Mark Breland and to our entire Channel 11 sports crew for another job well done. I'm Denny Petro, and thanks for being with us here on this Sports Special, PCTV's Knockout. Why you lying for? I know where you live, I know your folks You was a sucker as a kid, your persona's drama That you acquired in high school and acting class Your whole aura is plexiglass What's the face told me you shot this kid last week in the park, that's a lie You was in church with your mom, see I know Yo, slow your road, get we good to go Guys be locked in this thing, go rapping just for dope Of course we gotta pay rent, so money connects But uh, I'd rather be broke and have a whole lot of respect It's the principle of it, I get a rush when I bust some dope lies 
so real That maybe somebody will call That's what I consider real In this field of music Instead of putting brain cells to work They abuse it Now I'm called I'll have a slave on The same clothing left hand And it's like the same as that to make a difference Besides all the ripping The traps are not sticking Rappers stop flipping For those who pose lyrical But really ain't true I'm The one place he doesn't want to be Trapped in a bar From Breland's point of view, Aguirre was the perfect opponent. There's the right hand that got him in trouble, put him down. He was the perfect opponent because he was not defensive in to getting counterpunched or getting hit. And that's what happened to Aguirre. He was very slow getting off that left. I mean, he, haven't re he did not even really start the left hook before Breland beat him to the, in the face of De Jesus was able to get up. But again, simply a case of thinking about survival for De Jesus as Breland relentlessly was able to pursue him. Throwing combinations that right uppercut and down he was. What happened? I was.